Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here because we have a second Alec. Hi, this is Alec from Matter Hackers. Matter Hackers is a 3D printing supply company, right? Mm -hmm. One of the biggest retailers in the US. We got printers, we've got supplies, we have laser cutters, mills, we have a bunch of different digital manufacturing supplies out there. Which is awesome, because they have put some 3D printers here in the workshop, and you have come all the way here to teach us mm -hmm. how to do some 3D printing yeah. for us to collaborate on making a pretty cool project. We're gonna be making a 3D printed vice, and we're then gonna cast it out of bronze. So it's brilliant to have you here. Thank you, Alec. Thank you, Alec, <laughs> for joining us. This is gonna get really confusing. Oh, I'm sure. We're gonna jump right in. So you guys might have seen, this is the little bit of the 3D printing area that has developed. We have two machines. What are these things? So we have a Pulse XE over here. Basically, plastic goes in, hot plastic comes out, and it forms 3D objects. So like it's kind of like a MIG welder that's CNC controlled and using plastic. Yes, it's all thermoplastic. All of this can be melted down to form different shapes. And this is an example of the type of piece that that will do. So that one, is very different from the Moai. Okay, and so what is this? So the Moai, so this is a vat of resin. So it's, this is a liquid. Exactly. So there, underneath here is where all the actual electronics of it are. You have a laser in here that works very similarly to the pulse where it traces out a path and then it progresses and continues to do the next one. So the resin is photosensitive. So having this door open, we're, it's probably time to shut the door. Otherwise we may get some uh, resin solidifying in there. But the laser has a much finer point than the nozzle does of the pulse. So mm -hmm. you can get a lot finer detail. The layer lines, even if they're exactly the same, they end up being a lot smoother. So this one essentially with that tiny laser is super precise, super accurate, but it only prints in resin. Right. This one here is less accurate, a little faster maybe? A little bit faster and because it is melting plastic, with thermoplastics, they're plentiful, there's a lot of different kinds you can use. With resin, they're a bit more specific, you basically have solid, a little bit flexible, and there's some specialty ones for casting specifically. Okay, great. So here, for example, you could get yourself a higher strength material to print with or a lesser strength material to exactly. print with, and here you're kind of limited to resin or casting resin. Yes, pretty much that. So the printers, great. We got those options, which is very exciting. But of course, we can't print anything without the design, right. which is where you come in with this. Unbelievable design. This is just awesome. This is the little mini bench vise, and holy moly, Alec, you killed it. This thing looks amazing. This looks like a beautiful old piece of engineering beauty, and I cannot wait to make this from bronze. And so with that model done, mm -hmm. how do we get it to the printer? So within Fusion, there's a really simple at tool that you can use in here that'll just export this as an STL, and with that STL, we can drop that either into Matter Control, if we want to print it on the Pulse, or we can drop it into Azura, which is the slicer designed for the Moai. And, exactly and, the and slicer is the way, the term for taking this 3D model and turning it into these individual layers. Yes. Let's do it. So it's all sliced up. This is this is what the slice looks like. It's right now we have the color view set up so that Whoa. shows all the speeds. That's crazy. So these are those triangles you were talking about. Yeah. So on the inside we only have it at 10%. So it's it's just solid enough for it to be able to print these layers over the top. Otherwise they droop if you had zero. Um, so we do 10% just so there's enough there to be a scaffolding on the inside and it prints over the top. Let's print it. Let's do it. It's been a little bit of time. It has printed, mm -hmm. and this is so exciting. <gasps> what? Oh! We 3D printed a device. This is the vice, and it is looking phenomenal. PLA, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So the next step 
is to see if we can cast this in an investment, mm -hmm. melt it out, and then burn it out before casting it. We need to do it in two parts. We need to think about how we're gonna arrange this. I've uh, already done the calculations as to how much investment we're gonna need, how much water we're gonna need. This is a monster six inch flask, same one that we cast the cavalry saber guard in. We just gotta work out how we're gonna arrange it, how we're gonna sprue it up, mm -hmm. do some wax work, and pour some investment. These screw into our, uh, into our flask bottom, but I mean, we've gotta put a boatload of bronze. We're gonna have no idea how to calculate that actually. Oh, you know what? In Fusion 360, you could calculate the weight, couldn't you? Let's as if that. it was solid. We can do that later. But I'm just super nervous about how we're gonna get enough flow to these parts through that. Maybe I abandon this and uh, we stick this thing on. I think that's a better starting place. You know what I'm definitely finding? Wax does not like to stick to PLA very well. I mean, isn't wax a release agent? I have no idea. On other things? I, I have no idea. Mm. I, I didn't know it worked for the CIA. Essentially what's happening is I'm melting the wax, trying to get it to melt, push it onto the uh, plastic, and then it just doesn't stick. It just runs off the plastic. So, it's a trouble, but we're getting there. And slowly but surely this thing will be sprued. PLA plastic does not like getting wax stuck to it. It was a huge struggle getting the sprues to stick, but it's done. We have it sprued. We have one vent coming from the bottom, and uh, I'm quite confident that this ugly mess is gonna work quite well. Both parts are gonna be cast at the same time. Before I mix up the investment, I'm going to put some debubbler on, because debubbles are no fun. This is some sort of uh, liquid that you can buy, and I think it decreases the surface tension of the actual investment. I can be completely wrong, but what it does do is supposedly, maybe and potentially, make us have less bubbles. Less bubbles, less troubles. So while those pieces are heating up in the wax burnout chamber, getting ready for us to cast them, we're gonna go ahead and turn down the piece of the vise that makes it move back and forth, which is the meatball, lead screw, and handle. And while we were doing that, we figured, you know what, we just let you know what the terminology and kind of the main pieces of a bench vise are. The two main castings, the pieces that we're casting in bronze, is the main body of the vise and the static jaw. The other piece that we're casting is the dynamic jaw and vise slide. So the, uh, the piece that kind of keeps it in control and, uh, and works back and forth, keeps it in place all that good stuff. Now the part that we're about to make right now, turning it down on the lathe, is called the meatball, lead screw, and handle. And it's kind of this area right here. This is the handle right here. This big chunk right there is the meatball. And then the lead screw runs 
all the way back to about right there and it's just a piece of threaded rod that lets the vise move back and forth. So we're gonna start off with a piece of three quarter inch phosphor bronze to make our meatball and lead screw out of. We're gonna turn it all the way down. We're gonna have an inch hanging out for the meatball and then it's gonna be eight millimeter bar for the rest of the lead screw. So we're gonna go ahead and chuck this up in the lathe. That lead screw wants to end a little bit before the end of the slide. So we'll go four and a quarter inches and then the meatball will stick out another inch. Now we're switching from imperial to metric and to imperial and metric, but we're just gonna do it all in imperial because the lathe measures things in imperial. So we need to come down to three thirty one hundred and fifty. How do you say that? Thirty one hundred and fifty thousandths of an inch? Three thousand yeah. one hundred and fifty thou? Yes, yes. That makes no sense. Three hundred and fifteen thou. 315 thousandths yeah, of an inch. That makes sense. There we go. We're gonna bring it down to 315 thousandths of an inch. That makes so much more sense. Oh my gosh. we have here is the hand. <laughs> All right guys, so we have the basic outline of the handle here. This is a little bit scaled up because the real handle is gonna be three inches long overall, which is teeny. We're gonna make this thing in two pieces. We're gonna have a meatball on either end, and one of those is gonna be the same piece as the actual handle itself, and the other one is going to be uh, riveted on. So we gotta turn down a tenon inside the other meatball, and then we'll be able to have a little bit of that tenon sticking out, and we'll be able to round that over and, and file it flush. Um, so it'll look like one solid piece basically if we do it right. Who knows if my lathe work is <laughs> up to par there, but we're gonna give that a shot. We're gonna start off with the disconnected meatball and then we're gonna turn the rest of the main piece. So now that we've got that handle made up, I actually, the first little second knob that I made was too big, or the hole was too big, so I made another one, and this one is just right. Basically, we need to make it so that this sits through there so that we can manipulate the lead screw. To do that, I'm gonna go ahead and take this thing. It's got an eight mil shank on it right now. I'm gonna drop it into an eight millimeter 5C collet and put that into a 5C collet block, which means that we can now safely clamp it in the mill. And that just means that we're going to be able to keep it nice and square as we work it. Okay, we've got this M8 die here. I'm going to go ahead and end up threading it on to the end and making this our lead screw. So we've got that thread threaded. We've got the handle handled mostly actually. We've still got to do the surface finish on it. Um, it's going to need I think a little bit of a belt sander work to clean it up, probably with a Scotch-Brite belt. After we get these cleaned up, we'll be able to peen on that end over this end of the handle. Should look really nice. And then we'll be able to thread this inside there, and it'll end up sitting like this, inside the actual vise.
Okay, I'm pretty happy with those surface finishes. They're looking pretty nice. It's now time to go ahead and attach that second part of the handle on there. time to do a little bit of surgery. I cut up this bronze to fit in there. I got halfway through cutting up this piece of bronze. Didn't make it all the way through. It was taking too long. This crucible is too small. We cannot fit all of the bronze that we need in it at one time, so we can't use it. This crucible would work if it fit inside of the forge, but it doesn't. So, like I said, it's surgery time. I'm gonna go ahead and cut about an inch off of the top of this to do a little bit of crucible surgery. Hopefully it'll work then. I'm gonna go ahead and cut about an inch off of the top of this to do a little bit of crucible surgery. Hopefully it'll work then. Be able to cut in a little bit of a pour spout for it as well. Let's see how it goes. Will, why would you do this to my crucible? Don't you know, Alec, that the punishment for being charged with bronze is a craniectomy? <laughs> so we gotta get some flux in this bad boy. Always seems to, uh, to help out a little bit. Some borax. No more. Oh my goodness gracious me. <laughs> this is gonna be a challenge when it's all molten. We'll be able to get it to like right there. <laughs> Isn't that heavy? <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? No, but it, we could pull it out, put it in this, and then two people could pour it. Let's do that. Okay, I think this is how we're gonna do it. We have to put the crucible in the fire while it's cold because it doesn't like heating up super duper fast or cooling down super duper fast. Charging it before the fire is hot is therefore the thing to do, I think. I'm no professional. Right, I'm gonna get this out of the kiln, he's gonna get the crucible out of the board. Ready? Yep. Wait for it. You stay there. There we go! That's a lot of bronze. Look how much is left. I hope we got all of it in. That was a ton of fun, but I think, well, you might have been on the money with being a little worried about how much bronze is left in that. Because there is so much bronze left in the crucible. That also casted like brass. And you were worrying just before we poured that, that it might in fact have been brass. That wouldn't be good. So yeah, regardless, we've got to wait about 20 minutes before we can quench that and see what the casting looks like. Our first 3D printed plastic casting Hopefully it's not a failure. Don't touch it. Time has passed. Ugh. Holy moly. I wanna watch that. This is terrifying. Blue, 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 blue. Happening. What's in there? It's coming alive! Alec, what do you think is gonna happen? I think it worked. I think everything went exactly as planned and we're gonna have no problem. Where do you get this confidence from? Have you ever watched our YouTube videos? Oh, oh, oh! Holy moly! I am so thrilled that casting our first 3D printed part worked 
a treat. The plastic melted out. Apparently you can get plastics that melt out even better. There was some carbon residue, but we have it cast. We're thrilled to have brought you along and we want to be sure to thank Matter Hackers for sponsoring this build and having Alec here to help teach us how to use all of this cool equipment. There's some affiliate links in the description below that you can hit for your 3D printing supplies and printers and hitting that link will help support us too. So big thank you to Matter Hackers for doing this cool collab with us and sponsoring this. Can't wait to see you guys on the next episode. Thanks again. Bye-bye.